Hello readers and listeners. Today we're reading Cam Jensen, The School Play Mystery, written by David A. Adler. Illustrated by Susanna T. Chapter 1. I, 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 Eric Shelton said, oh, I can't do this. Eric looked at the papers he was holding. It's too scary, he shook his head. I can't do this, he said. I just can't. Eric wore a long black jacket, white shirt, black bow tie, and black boots. He stood on the stage of his school's auditorium. He was a star of the school play Stories of President Lincoln, of course you can, his friend Cam Jensen told him. You're smart and honest. You'll make a great President Lincoln. Eric smiled. I love the second half of the play, Cam told him. I love it when you put on that top hat and beard. You look just like President Lincoln. But I won't remember my lines. Sure you will, Cam told him. You have a great memory. No, Eric said. I have a good memory. You have a great memory. Now, Cam smiled. Here, Eric said. He gave Cam his papers. Test me. See if I know my lines. I don't need the script, Cam pointed to her head. I have a picture of it right here, she said. Cam closed her eyes and said, click. It's six cents, Eric said. I made a mistake this morning when you were in the store. You walked all this way to bring me six cents? Cam asked with her eyes still closed. Cam reached out and hit Eric's nose. Oops, I'm sorry, Cam said. Eric moved her hand to his shoulder. Cam patted Eric's shoulder and said, Now I know why people call you Honest Abe. Eric applauded. That was great, he said. You know Susie's part. Cam opened her eyes. I know everyone's part, she said. I have a picture in my head of every page of the script. Eric was right. Cam does have a great memory. I have a mental camera, she said, and pictures in my head of just about everything I've seen. Cam says click when she wants to use her mental camera. Camera, she says click is the sound her mental camera makes. Cam's real name is Jennifer, but when people found out about her amazing memory, they began calling her the camera. Soon, the camera became just Cam. Where's Susie? Miss Benson called out. Where's Jane? Where's Hillel? Hurry, hurry! Children ran to their places. Cam, is everything in order back there? Yes, Cam answered. Good, I'm counting on you. Miss Benson fixed Eric's bow tie and Susie's collar. Then she told Cam, let's go out front. Cam followed Miss Benson into the hall. Two children sat there behind a table. On the table were school books, a comic book, a few animal crackers, a pile of tickets, and a shoebox. Sarah and Danny, this is no good, Miss Benson said. I just want the box and the tickets on the table. Sarah and Danny took everything else off the table. There was a stilt in the top of the shoebox. The sides were neatly taped to keep the box closed. The money goes in there. It goes in here, Miss Benson said. She pointed to the top of the shoebox. And don't take off the tape. Just put the money in the box. Tickets are one dollar each, so you shouldn't have to make change. I think we're ready, Kim said. Miss Benson looked at her watch. Okay, she told Kim, let's open the doors. Chapter 2. Kim turned the latch on the doors to the schoolyard. Miss Benson pushed open the doors. Welcome, welcome, Miss Benson said to the people who walked in. Just line up by the table. Sarah and Danny will be happy to sell you tickets. Remember, all the money we raise goes to charity. It's for Ride and Read to bring homebound elderly people to the library. An old woman was the was the first in line. My granddaughter's in the play, she told Sarah. She is Mary Todd Lincoln. The next woman in line said, 
My nephew is taking care of the lights. That's important, too. Cam walked past a long line of people wanting to buy tickets. She went outside into the schoolyard. Some young children were on the swings. Lots of teenagers were playing basketball. Cam looked across the schoolyard. Then she saw her parents and Eric's family. Cam waved. Hurry, she called to them. The play is about to start. This is so exciting, Mr. and Miss Jensen said as they entered the school. Eric's twin sisters, Donna and Diane, were next. Then Mr. and Miss Shelton walked in. Mr. Shelton carried Eric's baby brother, Howie. Shh, Mr. Shelton whispered to Cam. Howie's sleeping. Howie's asleep. Cam watched as her mother paid for two tickets. Danny pushed the money through the narrow stilt in the top of the shoebox. Next, the Sheltons paid for their tickets. Please stay here, Miss Benson told Cam. I'm going backstage to see if everyone's ready. A few boys came in from the schoolyard. One of them carried a basketball. Hey, what's going on here? One of the boys asked. Cam told them that they were raising money for charity. She told them about the play, but they weren't interested in a play about President Lincoln. I learned about him in school, one of the boys said as they left. There were only a few people still in line. The last was a tall woman. Wait, she had her on her on she had on an orange dress. Cam wanted to remember her. She looked at the woman, blinked her eyes, and said click. Then Cam told Sarah and Danny, I'll let Miss Benson know you're just about done. I'll be right back. Cam walked into the auditorium. The seats were almost all filled. It was noisy. People were talking while they waited for the play to begin. Cam went backstage. Her classmates were check her classmates were checking their costumes. Some were looking at their scripts, making sure they remember their lines. You all look just fine, Miss Benson said. We're gonna put on a great play. Susie giggled. What is it? Miss Benson asked. I'm sorry, Susie answered. I laugh when I'm nervous. Don't be nervous, Miss Benson said. If you forget your lines, look to the right. I'll be just behind the curtain. I'll help you. And please don't laugh. Miss Benson asked Cam, is everyone seated? Cam looked through the curtains at the people waiting for the play to begin. She found the tall woman with the orange dress. The woman was in the aisle. She was drinking from a soda can and looking for a seat. Cam told Miss Benson, we're almost ready. Cam watched the woman with the orange dress in the last row. Now we can start, Cam said. The last one in line for tickets just took her seat. Miss Benson gave Cam a pair of scissors and a leather purse. She told Cam to open the shoebox, count the money, and put it in the purse. Then Miss Benson called out, dim the lights. The lights, the show is about to begin. Cam walked quickly down the center aisle. The lights did. People in the audience stopped talking. They looked toward the stage and waited. Cam opened the doors and went into the hall. Can we go in now? Sarah asked. We want to see the, see the play too. Cam said, Miss Benson wants us to open the box. She wants us to count the money and put it in the purse. Then we can all go in and see the play. Cam cut the tape that was wrapped around the top and the sides of the box. She took out the lid. There were just a few dollars in the box. Hey, Cam said, you sold lots of tickets. What happened to all the money? Chapter 3. Sarah counted the money. There are just three dollar bills and four quarters in the box. I put lots of money in there, Sarah said. Lots more than this. Danny said, I did too. The auditorium's just about full, Cam said. You must have sold about 150 tickets. At one dollar each, that's a hundred and fifty dollars. Cam hailed up the money she had taken from the box. All we have here are four dollars, Sarah told Cam. I didn't take it, and I didn't either, Danny said. I know you didn't, Cam said. She looked at the box. The only hole in it was the was a stilt silt at the in the lid. On the table were some unsold tickets and two empty soda cans. Cam looked under the table. She found a ticket but no money. Danny told Cam, Sarah and I were both sitting here. We never left the room. Whenever we sold a ticket, we put the money in the box and we never opened the box. I know, Cam said. I just cut off the tape. Cam opened the door to the auditorium. Cam, Sarah, and Danny looked inside. At one side of the stage was an easel. A boy walked onto the stage and put a sign on the easel. Honest Abe Lincoln, Cam whispered, I must tell. 
the curtain opened. On the right of the stage was a very large cardboard box painted to look like the, to look like the front of the house. In the center of the stage were two barrels, barrels and a table. There were also a jars. There were also two bar There were lots of jars and small boxes on the table. Susie stood and looked at the things on the table. Above her was a sign: Outfits General Store. I'll have to wait, Cam whispered. I'll t t tell her after the scene. Eric walked onto the stage. A spotlight walked him as he slowly. A spotlight followed him as he slowly walked towards Susie. People in the audience applauded. Hello, Miss Alzen. Eric said. Susie put her hand to her mouth. She's about to laugh. Sarah whispered. Susie looked to the right to Miss Benson off stage. Then she took her hand from her mouth and said, "Hello, Abe." She told Eric she needed flour, shortening sugar, and raisins. She told him how much of each she needed. "I'm taking, I'm baking raisin bread," she said. Eric carefully weighed each of the items. He wrapped them. He put everything in a large paper bag and gave it to Susie. Eric took a small pad from his pocket. He made some notes on the pad and then told Susie that'll be one dollar and nine cents. Susie paid Eric. She walked to the right of the stage and sat by the cardboard house. Other children came into Outfit's general store. Abe, don't you have a story for us? One of the children asked. Sure, I do. Eric answered. Eric told about a small child who was scared at a night. At night, by loud by loud noise, his father looked and looked. Eric said, "At last, he found the noise was coming from a bullfrog." He showed the boy the frog and said, "Don't be scared, son. Sometimes a loud noise is just a way of saying howdy." Eric leaned back, opened his mouth, and laughed. The children on stage and lots of people in the audience laughed too. The children finished their shopping and left the store. Eric waited. When no one else came into the store, he counted the money he had been paid. He took the small pad from his pocket and looked at it. Oh my! He said, "Miss Alzen paid too much for her groceries." When he counted his money, he found too much. Eric Danny whispered. When we opened the shoebox and counted our money, we found too little. Eric put lids on the barrels. He covered the table with a large cloth. The, then he walked very slowly across the stage towards Susie. He gave her a few coins. Susie looked to the right again. Then she said, "You walked all this way to bring me six cents." She patted Eric's shoulder and said, "Now I know why people call you Honest Abe." Eric and Susie walked to the center of the stage and bowed. The children who had been outfit store. A bin outfit store came out and bowed too. People in the audience clapped. As the curtain closed, Sarah said to Cam and Danny, "This is a play about honest Abe Lincoln, but there's someone here's here who's not honest at all. It's not he's not honest, but he's clever." Danny said. Somehow he stole the money without opening the box, and he stole the money without Sarah or me seeing me do it. Seeing him do it, Miss Benson said she was counting on me. Cam said, and now the money is gone. I've got to tell her what happened. Cam hurried backstage. Miss Benson was busy there, getting the stage and the children ready for the next scene. Clear the table. Move it to the side. Miss Benson said. Roll the barrels to the back of the stage. Take down the outfit sign and put a Lincoln for President sign. Miss Benson, Cam said, I have to talk to you. I have to talk to you, good Cam. Miss Benson said, "I'm glad you're here. Make sure everyone's in place for the next scene. It's about the money." Cam said, "Go ahead, go ahead." Miss Benson told Cam, "Get everyone in place. The audience is waiting." Everyone backstage was busy. Cam watched as the table and barrels were moved. Then someone brought out a small step ladder and placed it in the center of the stage. Eric had on a top hat and a long black cloak. He got up the ladder with one hand. He held onto a lapel of his coat. He pressed his lips together and tried to look very serious. Cam stood to the right of Eric and called out, "Susie, Hilly, Jane, and Jacob, you belong here, facing Eric." And、then Cam went to Eric's left and called out, "Samuel and Deborah, you belong here. Are we okay? Are we set now?" Miss Benson asked Cam, "Is everything okay?" "The scene is okay," Cam told her, "but everything is not okay." She told Miss Benson there were only four dollars in the shoebox. "What?" Miss Benson said. "There should be lots more money than that." 
Eric and the other children on stage heard Miss Benson. They gathered around her to hear what happened. Pam told them all about the shoebox and the missing money. How could that happen? Eric asked. How could someone steal the money without opening the box? What are we going to do? Susie asked. Cam and I'll find the money, Eric said. This is a mystery, and Cam and I'll solve it. We solve lots of mysteries. You're not solving anything, Miss Benson told Eric. You're President Lincoln. Miss Benson looked at the children who had gathered around Cam. Now get to your places, Miss Cam told Miss Benson told them. People came here to see a play, and they're going to see one. We'll find the money. Eric got back on the ladder. Don't worry, he told everyone. Cam will say click a few times. She'll look at all those pictures she has in her head and find the money. Miss Benson put a small telephone from took a small telephone from her pocket. She called the police and quickly told them what happened. Please go outside and wait for the police, Miss Benson told Cam. They will be here soon. Then Miss Benson called out, Dim the lights. Cam hurried to the side of the stage. She watched the children in the center of the stage wait for the curtains to open. Then Cam looked to the back of the stage at the outfit's general store sign, the table and the barrels. Open the curtain, Miss Benson called out. Cam looked at the table again. Suddenly she remembered something. She closed her eyes and said, click. Cam said, click again. She opened her eyes. I just saw something, she told Miss Benson. I don't know who took the money, but I money, but I think I know when it was taken. That's a start, Miss Benson said. Tell the police whatever you know. I will, Cam said. But first, I have to talk to Sarah and Danny. Chapter 5. The curtains opened. A house divided against itself cannot stand, Eric called out. This nation cannot survive half slay and half free. Cam hurried down the aisle to the back of the auditorium. I need to talk to you, she told Sarah and Danny. They followed Cam out of the auditorium. You said you never left the room, but you did. When I came back, there were two empty soda cans on the table. Sarah told Cam, we didn't leave the room to get soda. A boy came in here with an ice cooler. There were only a few people in line, Danny added. Some of them also bought soda. That's when the money was taken, Cam said. The money was taken when there were four people still in line. They brought their tickets after the money was stolen. That's why when I opened the box, there were only four dollars in it. Cam looked outside. There were still many children in the playground. She saw a boy with a large cooler sitting under a tree in the corner of the schoolyard. Cam pointed to the boy sitting under the tree. Did he sell you the soda? Cam asked. Sarah and Danny looked at the boy. That's him, they told Cam. Just then there were flashing light, lights. A police car parked near the schoolyard. Two police, two officers got out, of, uh, got out, a man and a woman. Cam ran to them. I'm Officer Feldman, this woman said, and this is my partner, Officer Zudo. Cam pointed to the boy sitting under the tree. That boy may be the thief, she told the officers. He may be the one who stole the ticket money. We have to speak with Miss Benson, Officer Zudo told Cam. Is she inside? I'll take you to her, Sarah said. The two officers start to follow Sarah and Danny. Wait, Cam said. Can't one of you stay with me and watch the thief? I'll stay, Officer Feldman said. Cam told her about the play, the, empty, the almost empty shoebox, and the boy with the ice cooler. Let's talk to him. Officer Feldman said, let's see what he knows about the missing money. Cam and Officer Feldman walked across the playground. Do you want a soda? The boy asked. No, Officer Feldman said. Officer Feldman answered, we want to talk to you. The office, the school doors opened. Officer Zudo came out. He was followed by Sarah, Danny, and Ms. Benson. That's him, Sarah told Ms. Benson. She pointed to the boy sitting under the tree. He's the one. Chapter 6. What's going on? The boy asked. What did I do? Did you go into the school? Officer Feldman asked. I went in there to sell soda, the boy answered. That's what I always do. And what about the money? Officer Zudo asked. Did you go near the table? Did you go near the shoebox? Excuse me, please excuse me, a girl said. I'm thirsty. I'd like an orange soda. Everyone waged and waited and watched while the boy reached into the cooler. It was filled with ice and lots of cans. The boy found an orange soda. He gave it to the girl and she paid him. Do you always do that? Miss Benson asked. Do you always find the sodas? No one else knows my system, the boy answered. Watch me, the boy said. I'll get a cola. He closed his eyes 
Then he lifted the top of the cooler and reached in. He took out a can and said, Cola. He was right. He put that back with his eyes still closed. He took out another can and said, Ginger Ale. He was right again. He opened his eyes. I know where everything is, he said proudly. I can reach in and find any kind of soda you want. When you came into the school, Miss Benson asked, did you stay by the cooler? Yes, the boy said. I always do. The boy answered, I always do. But when you got your drinks, Miss Benson said to Sarah and Danny, you weren't by the table. That's when someone stole from the shoebox. The shoebox, Cam said. She thought for a moment, the shoebox, she said again. Then Cam closed her eyes and said, click. What happened when you came into the school? Officer Feldman asked. People crowded around me. They all brought drinks, the boy answered. Did you see anyone else come into the school? Did you see anyone go into the table? Cam said, click again. No, the boy answered, but I wasn't watching the table. Click. What's all this clicking, Miss Benson asked Cam. Do you remember something? Yes, Cam answered and opened her eyes. You keep asking about your shoebox, but that's not the one I opened. Sure it is, Danny said. I saw you do it. I saw you cut the tape and take up four dollars. I saw it too, Sarah said. Miss Benson looked at her right foot and said, These shoes came in that box. They're new. No, Cam insisted. I didn't cut the tape off the shoebox. Wait right here and I'll prove it. Chapter 7 Cam hurried across the playground. She went into the school and found the box and the lid. They were still on the table. Cam looked at them carefully to see if they matched the picture she had in her head. They did. Cam grabbed the box and the lid. She ran outside and gave them to Officer Feldman. This isn't the shoe box Miss Benson left on the table, Cam said. It's a sneaker box, a size 10 sneaker box. And I can wrap the whole box in tape like that, Miss Benson said. I taped it neatly along the sides. Whoever stole the money, Cam said, switched the boxes. Did you see anyone come into the school with this box? Officer Feldman asked Sarah and Danny. They both said they hadn't. So, Miss Benson said, we know when, when and how the money was stolen. What we need to know is who did it? If we knew that, maybe we'd get the money back. Officer Feldman took the sneaker box and said, that's true, but we do know a few things about the thief. The thief, Cam said quickly, is a boy with a new pair of blue size 10 sneakers. Miss Benson looked at the box and these are expensive sneakers, she said. I bet he's very proud of them. I bet that right now he's wearing them. Let's start looking, Officer Zudo said. Wait, said the police officers. Wait, Cam, Cam said to the police officers, if the thief sees you here, he might get scared and run up. Then we may never find him. I'll look for him and I'll help, Miss Benson said. He never saw me. He won't know I'm from the school. We'll give you a few minutes, Officer Feldman told Cam and Miss Benson. We'll wait here under the tree. Then if you don't find him, we'll look too. Sarah and Danny waited with the two police officers. Cam and Miss Benson walked slowly through the playground and looked for a boy wearing a new pair of size 10 blue sneakers. Miss Benson pointed to a boy on the swings. He's wearing blue sneakers, she said. He can't be the thief, Cam said. He's too young. Those sneakers are probably size 2. There are many children, mostly boys, playing basketball. You know, he may not be here, Miss Benson told Cam. Cam stopped and said, wait a minute, I may know what he looks like. Cam closed her eyes and said, click. Some boys came into the school, Cam said with her eyes closed. They wanted to know what we were doing. I told them about the play, but they weren't interested. One boy said, one said he learned enough about President Lincoln in school. Oh no, Miss Benson said. You can never learn enough about President Lincoln. One of those boys must have seen Sarah and Danny put money in the, into the shoebox. He must live near here. He went home, he taped up the sneaker box. Then when he saw the boy go in with the cooler, he sneaked in and switched the boxes. Was one of them wearing blue sneakers? Miss Benson asked. Yes, Kim said with her eyes still closed. A tall boy with long blonde hair and blue sneakers on, and he wore a white t-shirt and black pants. Cam opened her eyes. She looked among the many boys playing basketball. There he is, Cam said and pointed. There's a thief. Let's go get him. Chapter 8. Are you sure he's a thief? Miss Benson asked. Yes, I'm sure. Now let's go get him. No, Miss Benson said. That's a job for the police. 
Cam and Miss Benson went into the corner of the schoolyard where the police officers were waiting. Cam pointed to the boy. She explained why she was sure he was a thief. Officer Feldman walked directly toward the boy. Cam, Miss Benson, Sarah, and Danny followed her. Officer Zudo went the other way. He wanted to be on the other side of the playground in case the boy turned and ran. The boy with blue sneakers was running toward the basket. Another boy had the ball. He threw the ball to the basket and missed. The boy with the blue sneakers jumped. He got the ball. He turned to pass the ball and saw Officer Feldman. The boy quickly turned and ran the other way right into the arms of Officer Zudo. We need to talk to you, Officer Zudo said. About what? I'm playing basketball. Is there some law against that? There's a law against stealing, Miss Benson said, and you stole money we raised for charity. You have no proof I stole anything, the boy said. Those sneakers you're wearing are proof, Officer Feldman told him. She showed him the box and said, this is the box they came in. The bo boy looked at the box, then he looked at his sneakers. Okay, okay, I'll give the money back, the boy said. I'm sorry, I'll give it all back. There are two large zippered pockets on the front of the boy's pants. He reached down and opened them. He took out lots of bills and coins. He gave them all to Officer Feldman. She gave them to Miss Benson. Can I go now? The boy asked. No, I'm sorry, Officer Zuda said. You did something terribly wrong. We're taking you to the police station. Wait, Miss Benson said. First, I want him to see something. Chapter 9. Everyone follow Miss Benson to the front of the auditorium. A sign, the Gettysburg address, was on the easel. Now Eric wore a stick on beard. He stood on the small stepladder. That, that this nation, Eric was saying, under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the, pre, perish from the earth. People in the audience stood and cheered. Eric got off the ladder and bowed to the audience. The other children on stage bowed too. The play was done. Wait, Miss Benson called out. There's more. There is? Sarah asked. Miss Benson hurried down to the stage. She spoke to the children. The curtain closed. People in the audience sat and waited. What is she doing? Officer Zudo asked. I don't know, Cam answered. Miss Benson likes to surprise us. Everyone waited. Then the curtain opened. The stage was set again for the first scene. Honest Abe Lincoln. Eric walked slowly towards Zeus. Hello, Miss Olsen, Eric said to her. Susie, Susie put her hand to her mouth. She looked to the right of the stage. Cam heard Miss Benson whisper, No laughing on stage. Don't laugh. Susie took her hand from her mouth and said, Hello, Abe. When the scene was done, people in the audience stood again and cheered. Miss Benson thanked the police officers. Then she told the boy who had stolen the money, I hope you watch that. You can learn a lesson from Honest Abe Lincoln. Officer Feldman and Zudo took the boy who had stolen the money into their police car. They drove off. Cam went backstage. Her parents were there with Eric and his family. Eric told Cam, I knew you would click and find the thief. Cam said, and I knew you would be a great President Lincoln. Eric smiled. You really were great, Cam's parents, Eric's parents, and Donna and Diane said. Maybe I was good, Eric said, but I'm happy to be Eric Shelton again. He reached into his pockets and took out his stick on and took out his stick on beard. This itches. Then with the beard, Eric teased his sisters. He tickled Donna and Diane's nose. Hey, Donna said, that does itch. Diane giggled and said it and it tickles. Donna and Diane laughed. Diana Diane took the stick on beard and put it on. I'm President Lincoln's sister, she said. Don't I look like him? That's funny, Eric said and laughed. And he said, then Eric leaned back, opened his mouth wide and laughed. It was his great President Lincoln laugh. When Cam, her parents, her Shelton, and Miss Benson heard Eric laugh, they laughed too. Soon everyone in the auditorium was laughing. They all laughed along with Eric Shelton, the star of the play, Stories of President Lincoln. The end.